By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Ron. He is one of my patrons and I always try to play at least one duel with all of my patrons. Uh, so Ron, first of all, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Um, and I asked him what kind of game do you want to play? So he said, let's just play Swedish old school. If you want to use reprints, I'm all good with that. We just used to be in our list of Swedish. But I also want to play a gentleman's game. Now, a gentleman's game is a game of magic where you take out your mind twist and your library of Alexandria. So you don't use those two cards. All the other cards that are normally legal in Swedish uh, old school are legal in this game as well. Now, before I go to the deck tech of both decks, and I really recommend you to stick around because these two decks, they're pretty magnificent, if I say so myself, especially Ron's build. It's really cool. Um, before I go there, I just want to point out that if you want to go straight to the games, you can check out the description below, click on the timestamp, and you can go directly to game number one. Uh, here, we are going to continue with the deck text, starting with the deck of Ron. And here we have a nice picture of Ron's deck. So this is the Rook Egg Valley deck. Now, obviously, you see some, um, some very typical synergies, and, and you see some more original synergies in this deck. So the idea of having Ufton Troll and a Rook Egg together with cards like Earthquake, that's like a common strategy. What's really nice here is that he also has, of course, Diamond Valley and the Rook Egg, also a common strategy. But what I want to point out here are the two Control Magics and the two Animate Deaths. I think that's really cool. He also has the Skull of or uh, Orm. Do you say Orm? Skull of Orm? Uh, over there he has a single copy of that, the Dark uh, Artifact, which is very flavorful, but also very useful, or I should say can be very useful. Of course, the problem with this artifact is that it requires a lot of cost to actually use it. But what you can do, you can tap it and you can pay an amount of mana and then you can get back an enchantment from your graveyard. So what we see here is in an ideal scenario, Ron can actually use a control magic to steal a creature from his opponent, use the diamond valley to gain life. Then the control magic goes into the graveyard and he can get it back with the skull. But there's actually more. He can also use his anime debt to then actually get that creature back that he just sacked. I mean, can you still follow it? So he can kind of make a loop here, uh, which I think it's pretty insane, you know. Um, but if it works, I mean, that would be pretty cool. Another thing that I notice here is that single copy of a Guardian Beast in this deck. It's interesting because he does play with Chaos Orb, so he can have the situation where he'll, he'll have the Chaos Orb Guardian Beast combo, but it doesn't really seem to be a main theme so it's just a little one-off that you know can be surprisingly effective but also when i look at the sideboard i see four uh discs there in the sideboard so maybe the guardian beast can can have added value after the first game if he decides to board in some of his discs so overall i think this is a very interesting deck and i'm, I'm really looking forward how this is going to play out and um just to let you know, and I know I've said this before in videos, but I do not know what deck I'm playing against. You know, I see these videos afterwards. The same thing goes for my opponent. And to be honest, I don't want to know because I just want to brew my own thing. And then, you know, just like in a tournament, just play against somebody you don't know who and, and, and see how it's going to turn out. Anyway, this is the deck of Ron today. So the uh, Rook Valley deck. Let's take a look at my brew. And my brew today is Artificer's Inventions. That's the name I gave this deck. And that's because of the two Artificers that play a big role in this deck. That's Sage of Latinam uh, and the Argivian Archaeologist. Now, obviously, Sage of Latinam plays a bigger part in this. It goes really well with um, a lot of cards, actually, in this deck. It goes well with Tetravis. I mean, that's pretty pretty uh, obvious. You know, it's an obvious combo where Tetravis is a 1-1 uh, flyer that comes into play with three plus one plus one counters. During your upkeep, you can take those counters off to make little 1-1 one -one flyers. I can then use my Sage to sack one of those flyers and for each one I get to draw a card. Now also you see Mana Vault in this deck. Mana Vault works brilliantly with the Sage of Latinam. Um, you also see uh, Triskelion. I can say the same thing for Triskelion. You know, it's a 1-1 one, one for 6, but it comes into play with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. You can use them to shoot at creatures. So as soon as the Triskelion is kind of out of arms, I can say, okay, I'm just going to use my Sage to sack it. In general, when you're playing with an artifact-heavy deck like this, you know, artifact removal is a huge problem. And the thing with the Sage of Latinum is it allows me to get a card back. So instead of 
losing a card when, with artifact removal, I actually stay at the same level because when my opponent plays a disenchant or a divine offering or whatever on one of my artifacts, I can say, okay, in response, I'm going to sack it with my Sage of Latinum and I'm going to draw a card. So what's going to be important here is to try to defend my Sages that I can keep them on the board. That's the reason why I'm playing three, which is you know pretty heavy. It's almost a full play set. Now also um, some other nice shenanigans in this deck um, is of course the copy artifacts there are three of them and what you can always do what i like is use your copy artifact to mana ramp by copying your mistress factories so just copy your factories gaining mana advantage gaining creature advantage um, it's really something that i uh, enjoy doing and there's also uh, another card here that i want to mention tonis's coffin now tonis's coffin is a card for four it's an artifact mono artifact from antiquities you can three and tap it because it's mono then you can select a creature to put into the coffin and that creature is considered out of play now the interesting thing is when the creature comes back into play not only does it keep its, its counters but it gets an additional counter bonus because it's entering the battlefield again so just to give you an example if i would put my triskelion in tonis's coffin with three counters on it and when i bring it back in the game by untapping tonis's coffin in my in my next untap step i get triskelion back with six counters so i mean that is pretty mind boggling you know that you just get this counter machine obviously it takes a lot of mana and you need the right circumstances but i'm really hoping that i can pull it off this game uh, also i'm playing with two city in a bottles which may seem odd when i'm playing with four city of brasses but my idea is that I can time when I play my City in a Bottle and my City in a Bottle is going to hurt my opponent more than that it is going to hurt me if I choose to play it. And I can always board it out after game one if I see that my opponent is very Arabian Night light, like, like I am. So um, this is my deck. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of both of these decks, by the way. And let's now go to game number one. Okay, game number one is about to start. Ron is sitting on the left with the Icy Manipulator playmat. I'm sitting on the right with the Protocol Sorcerer playmat. And I get to start you with a single island. Maybe nice to, um, to tell you here is that Ron is also the organizer of the Troll Cup. It's a tournament that's held every year in Leeuwarden. Uh, obviously, it's an old school tournament. And ooh, look at that, a lightning bolt on my Sage of Latinam. Not good news for me, for me. Luckily, I'm playing with three of those. Um, but like I was saying, so he has his own uh, old school tournament and he also has regular events that he organizes over there in Leovarda. So if you'd like to know more about that, I'll place a link to his Facebook page in the description below. In the meanwhile, we see Ron here taking an extra turn with his time walk and playing another duel. Not doing too much with that turn, but he is taking over the initiative and I'm playing my City of Brass passing turn as well. One of the things that I liked in this game that I now remember when looking at it is that Ron was constantly expecting a counter spell. Um, but as we know now, when you've seen the intro, I'm not playing a counter spell in this deck. Tapping here for four, and there's a Rook Egg drawing here. He's got four cards in hand. And playing my Mishra's Workshop. So that gives me some possibilities here. Look at that, playing a Tetravis, a 4-4 Flyer. And hopefully I get a chance to change those, to change the 4-4 into three Tetravites, into three 1-1 one, one Flying Tokens. Because one of the reasons to do that, this um, apart from wanting to sack your tokens to the Sage of Latinam, is that you want to make it hard for your opponent to remove the Tetravis. So when you break it down into little creatures, it's really difficult to just play a single disenchant. Ooh, interesting. He's playing an Earthquake, obviously, to get his Rook Egg going. So that means that at the end of the turn, he gets the 4-4. Look at that nice printed out token card there, the 4-4 Flyer. He's got the Drake. And there I go. Despite the fact that he has that 4-4 Dragon, I decide to Make my Tetravis into four little Tetravites. Playing his Swords to Plowsiers here. So taking, taking care of that. Attacking him for one. Because my Tetravites are having Summoning Sickness. And look at that. Playing a Yoshin Soldier. And Yoshin Soldier was one of those cards that wasn't on the deck picture. Because the deck picture was taken later. So Yoshin Soldier used to be in this deck. Playing with three Yoshin Soldiers. I did take them out though. 
And there's another Rook Egg. I find Joshin Soldier very useful, by the way, but I mean, in this deck where I usually have a lot of mana early game, I want to use it for something else than casting a Yoshin Soldier. And I've passed turn here. And now it's just... Now it's just waiting and, and seeing if my opponent, Ron, can do something against my Flyers. Because he's taking 4 damage now. Maybe he has another Earthquake or another way to get his Rook Egg to die and get his 4-4 Dragon, Flying Dragon, out of the Egg. It looks like he's in the tank here. And he's playing a Brain Geyser here for 2. And you, by the way, you see this troll bingo card on the side of uh, of Ron. One of the things that he he does, I don't know if he's going to do it again. I mean, I'm not, you know, Ron, you organize it. You you tell us. Uh, he organized troll bingo, so that meant when you had special things happening in your game, like your strip mining a loa, or um, you have an Upton troll on the battlefield, then you would get a stamp, and if you have a bingo, you would get some sort of prize. So that was like a lot of fun because you would hear. Uh, bingo all the time during uh, the actual games at the tournament. Look at that, a control magic on my Tetravus. But of course, he cannot take over my Tetravites. And, and this is, of course, one of the great things about the Tetravus. And now I'm pinging it down with my own Triskelion. One of the great things is because it's no longer just a 4-4 four, four flyer, it's now a 1-1 one, one flyer with three of the tokens. It's really hard for your opponent to deal with or to get rid of. So Ron is trying to kind of work against it here, but having a hard time. Ooh, this this can be interesting. Playing this anime dead. Ooh, this is not good news for me here. And I'm really liking this idea of playing with Control Magic and with anime dead. And there is my Chaos Orb. I spell blast. That is unfortunate. Because I could have used the Chaos Orb, obviously, on the anime dead. I need to get rid of that anime dead before he's able to make little tokens. I'm playing a Suchi for some more pressure. Maybe he's not going to make a little Tetravite. What would you do in his situation? I think I would just... To make it more difficult for my opponent to get rid of the creature... Then again, the fact that he has a 4-4 creature means that he can just block my 1-1 flyers now. Anyway, he decides not to pass his turn. So those three little counters there or my 1-1 flying Tetravites. I mean, I've got a lot of board presence, but there's just not much that I can do. If I attack with my Suchi, he can block it with his Rook Egg and get a 4-4 flyer. So we're kind of in a stole mate position here, which I think is best for my opponent because when he draws another earthquake for example he can do some serious business of course he is on eight so he is pretty low there's another earth control hitting the table and paying four. Ooh, Thomas's coffin this is very spectacular what i can do now is i can use my uh, Triskelion to ping him for two with the two counters on there. You see the, the, the dice saying two. Then I can put him in my coffin. He will come back into play with three more counters. And that's kind of a way to kill him without having to attack him. So I think if I play this the right way, and I believe we were kind of discussing the ruling of Thanos' coffin. If I play this the right way, I can actually do some serious damage here. And I can I can win this. Of course, it is risky because you have to wait until you're on tap face. And it will take at least two more turns for this plan to work. So Ron has some time to find an answer. It's going to be interesting. I mean, he needs to do something. But let's see if I can actually... Okay, this is interesting. So he's taking off two little Tetravites. So now he has a 2-2 two -two flyer. 
and two little 1-1 one -one flyers. That's it. I mean, Tetravis is such a flexible card. You can do so many things with it. And here you go. Here you see that synergy that I talked about. So you see me pinging Ron for two, going down to six, then putting the Triskelion into the Tonus' Cuff, and now it's my turn. I'm probably going to, yeah, I'm going to untap it. it. It gets three more counters, and I get to draw a card here. So this is the combo really working, really kicking off the way it's supposed to. And I'm probably going to wait until end of end of Ron's turn before I'm going to hit him for another three. And I think it's a very good decision from Ron, by the way, to put those two little 1-1 one -one flyers in. Because if he wouldn't have done that, I could have attacked with my three 1-1 one -one flyers. He only could have blocked one and he had to take two more damage. So this is, you know, better from a from that safety point. And look at that. Yeah, finishing the game. That went pretty fast. But what I did is I pinged him for three at the end of his turn. Then I put the Triskelion back into Taunus' coffin, untapped it during my untap step, and hit him for three again. So that means the first game is mine, but now we are going to go to our sideboards. Game number two. Let's see what's going to happen here. Ron gets to start, of course, after losing that first match. But I am worried because after sideboarding, he's playing with red. Um, you know, he can put in Shatter Storms. He can put in Shatters. Um, so there are a lot of... There's a lot of nice quality artifact removal that he can put into his deck. So it's going to be interesting here. Playing a Tundra. And there's an Ancestral Recall on his end step. And that's that blue power here. Drawing another card. And I get some questions, by the way, from time to time. Why I don't play with blue power? Well, the answer is very simple. I don't uh, own any uh, blue power. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's on my wish list, but as every old school player knows, there are so many cards on the wish list. And let's see, tapping two here, playing my Sage of Latinum again. And in that first game, we saw a very quick Lightning Bolt, so the Sage hasn't really got a chance yet to show off in, in this matchup so far. So hopefully this game, he'll get a chance to shine. There's a Volcanic Island by Ron passing turn. And they're playing a basic island. Let's see what I can do. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. I have no idea why, because I cannot really think of any three drop that can be significant. Maybe I'm also thinking, is my opponent playing with counter spells? Tapping two here, playing another Sage. Interesting. And there he goes, he plays a Diamond Valley. If he can play an Earthquake now for two, he just gets rid of two Sage of Latinams. So, not really sure why I played this out then again. I don't remember what I have in my hand, so I'm sure I had a choice, or a reason, I mean, to do this. There is a Strip Mine. Deciding to strip his Volcanic Island, making sure he cannot counter. So does that mean that I'm going to play out something else now? It does. I'm playing a copy artifact. Oh, now I get it. I was afraid of my opponent using a Lightning Bolt at the moment that I would activate my Mistress Factory to use my copy artifact. So I wanted to get rid of his Red Source first. And at the same time, I would get rid of his uh, blue source, making sure he can counter or at least play out a counter spell. So that was kind of my idea, because when you play a copy artifact and there are no other targets in play, what could have happened was Ron would play a lightning bolt over my Mishra's factory. I had no targets, so my copy artifact would fizzle. So basically, one lightning bolt would would uh, give him a Mishra's factory and a copy artifact. So it would, would have been a really nice two for one for him. So that's probably why I decided not to do that a turn early. So I'm being very cautious here. It's also interesting that I'm now using the strip mine for the volcanic island because the Diamond Valley is plays a very big role in his deck. Now obviously we didn't see that yet in, in game number one, but a Diamond Valley is always a big part in any Rook Egg deck. But uh, it looks like I made this decision based on, you know, on wanting to play out that copy artifact Mistress Factory play here. Let's look at what Ron's doing. He's sacking his Black Lotus to play out a Rook Egg. 
And there is a Tetravis taking the risk here to find a counter spell. Instead, he's sacking his Rook Egg on my end step, gaining three life, and of course that four four flyer to take care with my take care of my Tetravis. And there's a control magic. Oh, that's not good. Oh, luckily I can sack. I almost forgot about that. So now you can see that Sage of Latin and really doing some business here. So the control magic basically was the removal card, but I, at least I get to draw a card in return. Paying three. This is nice playing my archaeologist. So now we have both artificers on the battlefield. So with a little bit of luck, I can start getting back my Tetravis and have some artificer fun. Attacking here, by the way, with a 3-3. Three, three. Ooh, playing a blue elemental blast on the dragon. So things are looking good for me. I only have one card in hand, though. That's the only thing. And I think Ron has some more cards. But I'm starting to stabilize here. Taking care of Ron's threats. Taking care of that control magic of that dragon. Ooh, this is bad news. There is a disc, a Nevin Earl's disc. So he's kind of going troll disco now with this deck. And... Yeah, I can attack still, of course. Attacking him here for four. Attacking him actually for full six because I'm expecting him to use his disc. And I don't have any targets anyway, so I'm just attacking here, dealing six damage. That means he's going to 16. And I can still activate my archaeologist to get back to Tetravis. And I think that's what we're discussing right now. So I can just do that as a as a response to him activating the Nevenerals disc. One of the things I find really difficult when you play with the archaeologist, though, is the double white. I that's always think, why not just make it white and one? Because it means you kind of have to be have to have your white sources. That's one of the things I, I really like about the archaeologist. It's just, just one blue and one, and you don't need to pay anything to activate it. So end of turn, taking back my Tetravis. And because of that untapped Nevenerals disc, I'm not going to do it. I Oh, I am actually. I want to tempt him to use his disc. In response, I can still sack it to draw a card. So I'm losing a factory there, but he is losing his disc. That's kind of my idea. And at least I get a card back. And then in my second main, I'm going to play a Tetravis. I, I just don't want to... I, I don't like it to be taken a hostage by a disc. Let me know what you think of my play. Maybe I should have just waited a little bit longer. But I'm hoping to put some pressure on now with the... Ooh, another one with the Tetravis, but there is another Nevenerals disc. He is stepped out, so at least I can hit him for another six. So he's going to nine here. Playing my City of Brass. There's a Mox Ruby. Interesting choice to play that out because he is going to lose it when he activate his uh, disc. Obviously, I don't know what he has in hand. Maybe he wants to use that ruby to cast the Rook Egg. So let's just wait and see. It is a really interesting deck that uh, that Ron has built here. Ah, there's a recall. He plays a recall for two. Wow, he has another... Oh, recall for one. Sorry, he has another disc in his hand. How many discs does he play now? I think these came from his sideboard. He's going full troll disco. Very clever. Kind of transforming his deck a little bit in that second game. Making it a 2-2 now. Attacking with both. Hitting him for six. In all honesty, I don't understand this decision, why I'm, I'm using my factory as well in this. I could have just attacked with my Tetravis. Ooh, of course, he, t he took back that Ancestral Recall, so he gets even more cards back. 
ay 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 that's bad news for me and i i feel that activating that factory was a mistake just attacking with the tetravis was enough so i'm really don't understand why i did that but maybe i just wanted really to force him to use that disc because of these eggs that i'm a little bit afraid of maybe but then still he has his diamond valley so that doesn't make any sense He's sacking it before blocks, or he's blocking it before damage, he's sacking it. And now I'm playing my swords. I mean, it's, 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 I, I get my reasoning and it's not a bad play, but the, the, the thing is here, he gets tons of life. He gets tons of life. Oh, there's a flip, there's a flip, let's uh, put it in slow-mo. Obviously flipping here on the Diamond Valley, because, that, I mean, that card is just such a key card in this brew. Hopefully I can hit it using my City of Brass as a target. And there I go. Okay, there I don't go, I guess. Let's see the flip now. Boom! This is great. I'm sorry. Sorry, Ron, but this, <laughs> this is a great feeling for me here. Hitting that um, Diamond Valley, it just feels it's crucial because you just keep getting life. I mean... I've done so much damage. I've put so much damage your way, so many creatures sideways, and you're still in 14. I mean, that's just ridiculous. But it looks like I've stabilized again. You're on 14, I'm on 16, I've got a creature. The only thing here is that you have more cards, I believe. I only have one card, so... I'm not out of the woods yet. It's far from over. And it's going to be interesting. And I've really already spent a lot of resources here. Let's see. It looks like Ron is a little bit in the tank. Paying four here. That doesn't mean he has to buy a life. Another egg. So many eggs. Hopefully I can find another swords. Because if I attack... Just means I'm going to give him a dragon, so I'm not going to do that. Oh, this is nice. Finding a Tetravis. That, that is going to help me. Passing turn here. So that means I now have a 4 4 Suchi and a 4 4 Flying Tetravis. Let's see, what can I do? And there's, ah, the Shatter. Just one turn early. Don't have a blue elemental, or, yeah, blue elemental blast here to protect me. Playing a Tetravis, or, uh, sorry, a Triskelion. It's just very unfortunate with that Shatter. Playing a copy artifact over the Triskelion. I'm probably top decking that one. Or else I would have played it over my Tetravis. And that Shatter is kind of a killer here. Because all you really hope for is that your Tetravis survives until it's your upkeep. And then you can take off the plus one plus one counters to create little 1-1 one, one flyers. And then it's going to be really difficult for your opponent to use that Shatter to deal with the problem. Because now you've got four little creatures instead of one big 4-4. Four, four. The problem now is, will I attack with my ground forces and give my opponent a 4-4 flyer? I mean, it could be worth it. Another thing here now is, if my opponent can find another... Ooh, Shatterstorm! Oh no! Oh, this is painful. I, 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 I mean, I can get him to 4 here, pinging him for 6 with Triskelions. Ah, this is bad news. He's attacking me now. My hand's empty. I'm top decking now. All of a sudden, it looks like I'm out of gunpowder. I think I think it was a mistake to dedicate so much to the board. I mean, I mean, he's on four, but I don't play with any direct damage. So only Triskelions can kind of hurt him directly. And I'm top decking, and he's now just putting playing more creatures. I mean, I have some turns to go. I'm on 11 still. He can hit me for 4 here. That's exactly what he does. Going to 7 means I've got 2 more turns in the most 
ideal situation. I mean, at a time like this, I usually just draw lands. So <laughs> it's attacking me now. Going down to three, time walking it. That's it. That's it. I felt like before the Shatter Storm. Yeah, mana vault and two lands. Yeah, that that wasn't gonna save me. Look at that. Even had a side blast to finish the game. Anyway, congratulations, Ron, on winning this game. It's a one-one now. Uh, let's go back to our boards and we'll see each other back in game number three. Game number three. It's a one-one now, and I have to win this one to win this matchup, or of course lose. I mean, Ron, you've got a great deck, so uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, if you win, you win. Um, it looks like Ron's taking a mulligan here. Oh, I'm taking a mulligan too, it seems. Okay, so we're both on, on six. And I get to start here. And look at that. Playing my Mox Sapphire. That's a pretty new card in my collection. I was able to trade it with my brother, uh, Yoop. So, Yoop, thank you very much. I know you did me a huge favor on that trade. As you can imagine, I had to trade away some really nice cards that I love to use for brewing. Like, I had to trade away two Guardian Beasts. And that's just, you know, some of the cards I had to trade. Then again, I mean, you have a chance to own another piece of power, which is which is really cool. Uh, and talking about power, Luke Ron powering up his deck with a time walk here, taking an extra turn. So now he is taking the initiative out of my hands. And let's see what else he's going to do. Playing a strip mine on my Tundra. So that's gone. Tapping two to play a Chaos Orb. I am playing with Disenchants, by the way. I just don't seem to be able to find them. In this case, they wouldn't have helped me much because they don't have a white source anymore after Ron took care of that Tundra. There's another Underground Sea. Is he going to use his Chaos Orb on my Mox? No, he's not. So he's not going to choose to deny, go for the Mana Denial plan. Not attacking with it this time. A little bit afraid of the Lightning Bolts, I guess. There's a Demonic Tutor. And you can really see Ron kind of, you know, taking, uh, uh, you know, taking over the game here. I mean, I had a pretty decent start, but oh, ancestral recall! Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Now it's really going south for me here. So he's got more cards. He's taken more turns, and of course, he tutored probably for the ancestral recall. That's basic. That's your basic play, I guess. And. No, I'm not. Am I attacking here? I am attacking here, kind of knowing that this... This is what we call bad play in Magic the Gathering. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a bad play. Okay. I remember this. I remember doing this and saying, okay, I thought maybe you boarded out your lightning bolts because I didn't see them in game two. Why would you board out lightning bolts? If you know the answer... Let me know in the comments below. I mean, there's, there's, when are you gonna ever gonna board out a lightning bolt? Board out a lightning bolt. Anyway, back to the game. We see a rook egg here played by Ron, who's really taking over this game now. And he's gonna flip. There's a disenchant in response. Nice. So I, I did find a disenchant. At least that's something. So. I guess I'm still kind of in this one. It's not like I've lost it already, but just that, that mistake with the factory, when you're already low on mana, I just I'm basically giving giving Ron my factory with that with that attack. Uh let's see what I'm gonna do to get back in here. Ooh, this is nice. Swords to Plows here is the perfect answer against the Rook Egg. Also getting in here for two because he has no red mana anymore for a bolt. So that's good news. Let's see, tapping four here. Will we see another Rook Egg? There is a disc. A disc is not going to hurt me as much as normal. Okay, interesting. Oh, this I, I like this play. <laughs> Playing a Black Lotus to cast an Often Troll. I like that, man. That's really cool. 
playing something for four here? Am I kind of aware that, oh, playing a brain geyser. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm not totally stupid. I thought, am I aware that there's a disc on the battlefield? Um, so playing a brain geyser for two. And passing turn here. So at least getting some cards in my hand. And there's the troll going sideways, hitting me for two. I really enjoy seeing cards like Ufton Troll. I know why they're not played often anymore, because they're just better options. I know that, but it's just still cool to see the creature. It's very flavorful. It's not, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good, but you just have better options, I guess. Tapping three here. Okay, playing a recall, getting back his ancestral recall. Of course you do, of course you do. And drawing some cards. And we're drawing some cards. Makes sense. I, I kind of feel like this whole third game run has had the initiative. Playing a basic island here. Passing turn. I mean, at least I'm still in it. Am I really going to attack again? Really? Okay, playing a workshop. Paying four for a Suchi. Passing turn. At least I'm making the right decision not to attack. I guess I want to ha just have a blocker for the Ufton Troll. And maybe, maybe, yeah, he's not going to use the disc, so I'll just have a blocker here. Blocker here. Sorry. Um, attacking now. I just want to force him to use his disc. That's exactly what he does. And he's also blocking with his troll. Well, is he? He doesn't have to. He's just regenerating his troll, of course. And then playing a Suchi after that. So I'm kind of trying to get ahead on board here. I'm not sure if I'm really succeeding. Ooh, a brain geyser. My mine was a brain geyser for two. His one is for four. I think I think this is gonna be a game decider, to be honest, because now he's got a handful of cards. That means a handful of answers and tricks. And I mean, if you look at this game, he's he's been able to cast an ancestral recall twice. This is actually not too bad. I, I'm, is this a good decision? I don't know if this is. It. I mean, it's one of those games. I get it. He's on ten, and I just want to get rid of his his Uthen troll, and then hit him for six. Just taking taking the risk. Probably gonna see a lightning bolt here. Yeah, we're gonna see a lightning bolt. But I, I do get this. Because the only way I can win this now is to be very aggressive because Ron has more cards. So if I give him the time to play out all his cards to do his thing, I am definitely going to lose. And the only thing I have right now is, the only thing I have going for me is life total. So he's now on 7, so I just have to try. But there's a Diamond Valley. So that's probably going to ruin my plans. I control magic. It's still tapped though, but he has that diamond valley as well. And attacking here for two. Going down to 12. Playing an archaeologist, at least having an option to get that Suchi back next turn. I I think this game got decided based on on card advantage. This this third game. Because again, a lot of things are happening, but it kind of felt like Ron was ahead. Oh no! Kicking me when I'm down, man. I was hoping to get back the Suchi with my archaeologist. But, you know, that party is a no-go because he's animating dead. He's animating my Suchi. The only thing that I can really hope for now is a balance. And 
even with the balance, because of my archaeologist, he can still keep one of his creatures. And gonna block. No, that's it. That's <laughs> that's game. Ron, congratulations! You've won this match. 2-1 for you. I'm pointing out at my Ancestral Recall because that was the card that I was hoping for. Because that's a great answer to Control Magics and Anime Deaths. But unfortunately, it wasn't there yet. I needed two more turns. Congratulations, Ron, on, on winning this. And thank you for this fantastic match. So it's 2-1 for you. What a match and what a beautiful deck built by Ron. I also enjoyed my brew, by the way. I mean, I've... I've tweaked it a little bit um at you know since the, since this game uh thank you ron and thank you for supporting me on patreon because the support from my patrons is very important to keep my channel going talking about support if you want to support timmy talks you can do so by looking at the video you just did that so thank you you can look at more videos on the channel more than 150 vids are up now and they're all about old school they're all old school magic related um, and of course you can also like, you can subscribe. According to my stats, 60% of the visitors isn't subscribed. Can you imagine that? So if you're one of those, if you want to subscribe, you would help me out a lot. It's free and it really helps the channel. It helps my rating when I'm posting new videos. Also liking, sharing it on your socials. It's also a huge thing that you can do to help me out here and leaving comments below. And if you want to, you can even support me financially by becoming a Patreon. So make sure to check that out. You can find a link to that in the description below as well. Talking about the Patreons, let's go to the end scroll and see who's supporting Timmy Talks. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!